be here at my show at Haven Gallery uh, titled Sunder and Swell. So tell us more about the title of your show and what inspired you to create this particular series. Uh, well, Sunder and Swell, uh, to break apart and to fill back up, is sort of an emotional journey and I wanted to explore um, some pretty specific themes um, within that and tell some, tell some stories, um, some emotional stories. How do you set the mood for your pieces? I naturally gravitate towards things that are uh, melancholy and a little bit gloomy, um, and it's through those sort of more somber stories that I've learned the most about the persistent strength of uh, positive things like love and hope. In addition to the bright use of color and the melancholic subjects, you do incorporate a number of other dualities visually in your work. One of the ones that we've discussed in the past are the indoors versus the outdoors. Would you mind telling us more about that? I get a bit claustrophobic if I can't see mountains and uh, water. I've almost always lived near water, um, except for one exception when I've lived in the Midwest and it was nothing but cornfields. Um, so I absolutely hated it. So for to me, water is um, this massive, mighty power um, it's the blood of the earth. It's both comforting and soothing, um, but it's also dangerous and powerful, um, sometimes downright malevolent. Um, so anyway, there are layers of symbolism to, to the outdoors. In this body of work, there are a number of women present. Can you tell us a little bit more about the inclusion of this gender? Why, do, why have I used women mostly in this series? Well. I, I'll use whatever symbols I feel are appropriate to tell the story that I'm after. Um, often, it makes sense for me to use the female form. Um, it's the lens that I see through. Um, but there are always situations that call for other symbols, you know, animals, other figures, different colors. Um, so it's not necessarily that these are self-portraits, um, but you can certainly find myself peppered throughout the stories. In addition to your use of women throughout your work, it's very noticeable that you have a great sense for costumes, as well as very beautiful hairstyles. You've mentioned before as well that you did study drama um, when you were away at school, or while you were attending school, rather. The, those costumes pull inspiration from that period of your life? Um, I use a specific type of uh, fashion and imagery. I'm, I'm especially drawn to certain, certain fashions and um, uh, I'm mostly interested in the duality of things that are both beautiful and alluring, but also dangerous in equal measure. So women's fashion specifically has a long history of being both this item uh, to, to beautify, but also um, very dangerous. So, you know, I've got billowing gowns, and uh, there's a long history of how dangerous that is for people. Um, there, there are la layers of symbolism and, uh, t to the choices that I make. As, uh, as far as um, fashion goes and those, those elements within the paintings. Another noticeable element is a mixture of the old with the new. You have some very contemporary aesthetics intertwined with perhaps compositions, fashions, um, even interiors in some cases um, from the past, whether it be from old master work or from perhaps a, a book, a piece of literature that you had encountered in the past or um, just something that reflects the old. If you'd like to tell us more about the incorporation of, of those two differing but kind of similar elements. I'm interested in uh, old photography, in um, sort of the, the, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s, the scientific uh, advances of that time and, uh, and the fashions of that time. But while I'm intensely fascinated by that, I'm, I'm also a product of my time. So I think it's important for me to tell stories that are able to, to have one foot in one world and to keep a foot in this world. Um, and I think that helps to keep other people interested as well um, when there's uh, a, a, a way to relate. And, and, and that's why I like to maintain some contemporary aspects, whether it's the composition or um, some inspiration from contemporary fashion editorials, things like that. Um, what can I say? I, I, live, I live now, so. There is a strong sense of mood in your work. I'd love to hear more about that as well as anything else you'd like to include in this segment. 
Um, some people say that uh, the work is really happy or because of the bright colors or that the stories I'm telling are a little bit sad and, and I, I think that I'm, I'm attracted to melancholy because it's mainly a device that keeps me interested and engaged. Um, the work that matters to me is, is the kind of work that maintains my fascination and addresses certain specific feelings. Um, it feels right for me to veer into darker territory uh, because I naturally gravitate towards that shadowy side. Um, I'm a big fan about I'm a big fan of stories about love and loss and loneliness, um, death and ghost stories, things like that. And I, I do love happier stories, but I'm not very good at telling them.